Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about the hinge theorems and we're going to use them in some practice problems. We've got a couple to review, so let's get started. First one, number 21, given uh, uh, figure ABCD is a square. I know that AF is perpendicular to DE as drawn. AE is congruent to BF as drawn. Which of the following is going to be correct based off of the drawing? DE is less than AF or the figure is overdetermined. All right, so what I tell my students when you're puzzled with a question like this in a diagram, start marking up the diagram and see what you can find. So we're going to start marking it up. All right, um, what I know is that AB is also perpendicular to DA, and I know that AED is a right angle. So I know that DAB as a right angle means that BAF, angle BAF and angle ADE equal 90 degrees. All right. Well, if uh, DAE and BAF are equal to 90 degrees, uh, then uh, ADE must be equal to, so I'm going to say ADE, this green here, must be equal to 90 degrees uh, minus the blue value. All right, so 90 degrees minus blue. And I can see here that this is going to be 90 degrees minus blue as well. So let's just take a couple numbers. Let's say that green here is going to be, uh, we'll say it's 30 degrees, and blue has to be 60 degrees. And if I have this angle here, DAE, and my right angle, AED, then the balance for this triangle is going to be green or 30 degrees. And if this angle is 30 degrees, and this angle is also 30 degrees, remember, because this angle is a 90 degree angle. So I end up having two at least similar triangles because they have angles which are all the same. Now, I'm going to go back and take a look at what I've been given. I know that AE is congruent to BF. So by angle side angle, I have two congruent triangles. All right, angle side angle, I have two congruent triangles. So I figured out that I have two congruent triangles, at least by the diagram that I've been given. Hopefully that's not too confusing for you. Uh, but let's move on. All right, so I'm going to say that triangle ABF is congruent to DEA by angle side angle. I have angle DAE congruent to BFA, side AE congruent to BF uh, as given, and then uh, angle uh, AED congruent to ABF. They're both right angles. That means that DE is going to be congruent to AB by CPCTC. Right, I have two legs of the triangle, two legs, DEA is congruent to uh, ABF. So AB and DE are congruent by CPCTC. I also know that AB is congruent to AD because both sides, or any side of a triangle, are going to be congruent to each other. So by the transitive property, I can say that DE, DE is congruent to AD. Now, how is that possible that DE, a leg of a right triangle, is going to be congruent to a hypotenuse AD? So this tells us that, in fact, this figure is overdetermined. It's not possible. Uh, the leg of a right triangle cannot equal the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So again, B is overdetermined. All right, 23. Given, we're going to move on. 23. Uh, given B, C, and D lie in uh, plane, uh, lie in plane M, B, C, D is isosceles with base C, D. Angle A, B, D is larger than A, B, C. I'm going to conclude that angle ACD is larger than ADC. So again, once uh, I tell my students, you're going to start marking up the diagram, see what you can figure out, and then let's go from there. All right, so uh, I have, again, the givens. I'm going to say that AB, segment AB, is congruent to AB by the reflexive property. So AB is congruent to itself. Uh, BD is going to be congruent to BC. So BD congruent to BC, by definition of an isosceles triangle, that was given. Angle ABD is greater than ABC, that's given. So angle ABD, ABD, so I have the two <coughs> uh, tick marks there, greater than uh, ABC, that's given. Now I can say that AD is going to be larger than AC by the hinge theorem. So remember, if we uh, said that <coughs> I have two segments that are congruent, AB and BD, and then AB and BC in two separate triangles. And if the included uh, angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, so ABD is greater than ABC, 
in the side opposite the first AD is going to be greater than or longer than the side opposite the second AC. So I know now that AC is less than AD. Well, uh, from chapter one, I know if AD is greater than AC, I know the angle opposite uh, AD, which is going to be ACD, is going to be the angle uh, greater than the angle opposite AC, which is going to be ADC. All right, and I can say that by if the sides are not congruent in a particular order, then the angles are also not congruent in that given order. Okay, moving on to the last question. Okay, last problem number 25. Given AD is a median, uh, angle ABD is greater than ACD conclusion, angle one is greater than angle four. So how do we determine that angle one is greater than angle four? Well, we've got a lot of triangles in this diagram. <clears throat> And again, I'll tell my students, mark up the diagram and try to work it out by marking out what you know and then going from there. All right, so let's mark up, and I'm going to explain this to you as we go through it. Let's mark up what we know. AD is a median, so BD by definition is going to be congruent to DC. All right, so let's take what we're given again. Angle ABD is greater than ACD. And now we're looking at all the large triangle ABC. ABD, angle ABD is larger than, so let's just say angle ABD is going to be larger than, do two notches there, than ACD. <clears throat> that means that AC is going to be greater than AB. So side or segment AC greater than AD, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, AC is greater than AB. Let me just write this in here. C is greater than AB. Okay, sorry for the interruption. That was AB. So AB is going to be less than AC because angle ABD is greater than ACD. All right, now we're going to say that AD is congruent to itself. So AD. And then we'll mark this up again. AD is going to be congruent to itself <clears throat> by the reflexive property. And I know that BD is congruent to DC already by uh, definition of the median. So that means that angle 2, and we'll mark this up, angle 2 is going to be less than angle 3 because I have, uh, by the hinge theorem, because I have AD congruent to itself, I have two sides that are congruent, uh, BD is congruent to DC, so my hinge theorem, AC is greater than AD, so two must be, angle two must be smaller than angle three. So angle two, uh, smaller than angle three by converse of the hinge theorem. Now I'm gonna say that ED, so now the shorter segment here, and let's do this in green, ED is congruent to itself. Now we're going back to another <clears throat> uh, triangle, another set of triangles. ED is congruent to ED by reflexive property. Now I'm going to say that BE is going to be less than EC uh, by the hinge theorem because I have this angle 2 less than this angle 3. ED is congruent to itself. BD again congruent to DC. So I have my hinge here 2 less than 3. So BE has to be less than. So BE is going to be less than EC by the hinge theorem. So if BE is less than EC, now I'm going to go back to section 15.1. I have my triangle BEC. So here's my triangle BEC, the smaller triangle on the bottom. I know that if <clears throat> BE, and let's give it its two marks, is going to be shorter than EC, then in this case angle 1 has to be greater than angle 4. All right, so a lot of stuff going on. Let's go through this again. AD is a median. ABD is greater than ACD. Conclusion, angle 1 is greater than angle 4. Well, if ABD is greater than angle ABD is greater than ACD, then I know that AC is greater than AB. If AC is greater than AB, then I know that angle 2 here is going to be less than angle 3 by the converse of the hinge theorem. Uh, and then in this triangle on the bottom, I have ED and BD congruent to ED and DC. Another hinge here, angle 2 is less than angle 3, so 
BE will be less than or shorter than EC. And then going back to 15.1, I know that <clears throat> if angle, uh, I'm sorry, if EC is shorter than BE, or EC is longer than BE, then I know that angle one is gonna be greater than angle four here. All right, that's it. Great, this is a great problem. I uh, hope you got it and uh, appreciate you sticking in with this one and understanding what's going on with this problem. Uh, learning about hinge theorems and uh, inequalities in the triangle and their relationships of sides and angles. Thanks for joining us in Not in Math. Come back again in any of the multiple lessons in the next edition of Ott and Math.